Whether you are a seasoned investor or a first-time landlord, these tips will help you make smart decisions and maximize your returns on rental properties. Yes, you guessed it. We will talk about what are a few tips to consider when buying a property for investment. Tip number one, let's figure out who is your client? That means who are your renters? And second thing you need to find out is why are they renting it and not buying it? Ask yourself, are these the students of university? Because you have in town a major university very popular and people come from surrounded uh, states to come and study here. Is it the medical center universities where you get resident doctors applying and they come and live here for maybe three or four years depending on their internship? Third, the families who are moving here in herds because they have gotten a job. As you all know, some of the states, some of the cities are doing awesome where the big businesses are moving in. As recent as you must have seen in Austin, Texas, there was a mass of people migrating from California, Chicago, New York, etc. If that is a situation you want to find out where they are going to be and what should be the ideal rent for them. Fourth category is my favorite where I have done tons of money by investing in the properties is I always look around for the financial big fortune 500 companies especially the engineering companies who are always contracted to migrate from different countries and contracted for three to four years the idea of knowing who your renters are will depend because student may afford $1,000 per month rent whereas if it's an exit he can go up to $5,000. Maybe the company is paying all the rent. We don't know. But your range is wide. How do you figure out who is your client? Tip number two. Always work with a lender who you trust and who you have built up raffle with. Hopefully when you bought your first home and run the numbers with them. See the income. See the potential rental income you will get. Um, you will add some vacancy rate 25% which in case in a year if you do not have that rented for a little while, will you be able to make it, afford it, or will it give you sleepless night? Things like that. Let lender give you a pre-approval, which will state comfortably, you can buy a house worth $300,000, uh, $200,000, or maybe $500,000. It will give you an idea as to between this five group I talked about, who you will be able to rent it to. Because depending on the pre-approval, you will be able to buy or afford a home in that area which will perform really good and will meet the criteria of your renter. So you're working backwards. You're not buying the property first and then deciding, oh, who's going to be my renter? You're going to figure out who the renter is first. Second, get the pre-approval. Third, talk to the realtor. Realtor, now you tell them, this is my budget and this is the house worth this much. I want to find it, which will take care of all my payments and it should give me a little bit extra, maybe, or break even via rent. Let your realtor do the research on the rental so that way they will give you the proper number and you will have the set expectations expectation as to in a year whether you are going to break even and have nothing or you are going to make some money as a passive income. Tip number four, always get the inspection done because inspection matters a lot because if you are buying a rental property, if it's brand new, nothing to worry about. You are really given warranty, kind of bumper to bumper for one year, two year for mechanical, 10 year for structure. But if it's a lived in home, you want to know the lifespan of each and every item. HVAC, your furnace, your roof, uh, is your foundation um, stable or not? Or does it show some movement? then you know in few years it may require a foundation repair roof same way how old is it um, has it lost all its grain on the shingles or uh, do you need to replace it save the money accordingly HVAC air conditioning and furnace those are very important factor for the tenant otherwise you will end up paying for their hotel for rooming and you know meals etc if your house becomes inhabitable for them during 
the term of their lease. These are critical findings. Let them do it. The inspector, you make a note and then follow it. Keep a reserved amount for your capital improvement down the road so you can even fix it as and when you think time is due. This tip is for one half of my renters who love it. Uh, one half of my landlords. Tip number five, consider property management. They really do excellent job. If you do not have time to look into it, to take a call at the end of the day when you're tired that I have broken my dishwasher or there is no cool air coming or there are issues in the area in the house. Property management will take care of it. They're equipped to take calls even till late evening and they have a nice crew to go fix the house according to the problems. They will send you a bill so you will be on top of it. Uh, you will be kept in loop and everything will be transparent. Please check with your realtors again. They do have a book of business who they trust as a property manager. Tip number six is going to be for home warranty company. Always register with home warranty company if your house is older than five years. That's it. Because home warranty company, the annual fee is maybe $600 to $700, but it can do you wonders. They have a trip fee. Basically, that's the only fee you pay during the repair call, but everything will be fixed, including parts, labor, and even if they have to do a follow-up, if the part is back ordered, they will come again, and you will be only charged with one trip fee. For my example, I have had it with First American. I'm endorsing them highly. Uh, there are some other good companies also. You can go look for it. I will just say from my example, they have done good. Um, they always send the crew on time within 24 hours to fix the problem. And if I had one time an HVAC problem, which was in the middle of summer, and they also provided me some funding to buy some mist fan, or they were also ready to pay for my hotel. So you want a company like that who will stand behind your back in time of need and not give you trouble. The tip number seven, look for value add opportunities. Just very recently, my client had bought a rental home with a huge backyard thinking it will be really good for the tenant to have uh, their children do something, you know, the children activity park, like, you know, the playground or something like that. They will be able to keep a small pool or pond or something. Guess what? The tenant requested my landlord, can landlord build a little tiny house behind in that big backyard because it had a separate entrance from the uh, side of the house and they can have a one bedroom apartment. It's called like a tiny home. They had to go through some permits, the city, HOA, etc. But they were able to do it. Guess what? Now my landlord has two income because there are two tenants, one in that for tiny home. But tiny home is not so tiny, believe me. It's 800 square feet, has a living room, has a kitchen, has a bedroom, private bathroom, and a half powder room. So it's beautiful. And their backyard is so huge that they both tenants can use, share the backyard for the children to play. Also, it's a great idea when tenants want to bring in their parents, but they don't want necessarily for them to live inside the house. You know, this gives them both a privacy and their private life to live. It's a great idea. It's a win-win. I am so passionate about buying rental property. I am so passionate about keeping two buckets for your retirement fund to build your wealth. This is a great example. I've done it. I have rented properties and I've seen my mutual fund. When they go down, my real estate has never betrayed me. For last 25 years, they have always appreciated three to five percent. And I know when I sell it, I'm going to make 60, 70 percent of return on my investment because my initial investment was only 25 percent, which I paid as a down payment. Rest of the money has been paid by my tenant. So guys, this is one of the greatest idea to build wealth. I am going to cover next week. So stay tuned as to how to build wealth through rental properties, going from one rental home to two to buy four rental properties in one year and how to do it. Please like and subscribe my channel. I will keep on giving you great stuff. And if you want anything more, if you have questions, feel free, you know where to find me. Thank you so much and I'll see you next week.